Forecasting the balance sheet is a little bit more general and it is mostly driven from general drivers from your income statement. We are provided three separate assumptions for the balance sheet where we don't expect additional equity, capital expenditures are based on the schedule, and then other current assets is primarily driven from sponsorship revenue. So let's actually start with other current assets and then forecast the rest just based on revenue and expense growth rates. So then at the bottom, I'm just going to create a section again called assumptions. And I'm going to first start with total revenue growth rate, where we're just going to calculate the year over year growth rate for total revenue. We're also going to use total expense growth rate. And again, calculate the annual growth rate for operational expenses. And then for other current assets, we also need to calculate the sponsorship revenue growth rate, where we're just going to divide the sponsorship revenue by the prior year. And let's start with here for now. So other current assets, we're just going to grow this by the sponsorship revenue growth rate. Cash is going to link to the cash flow statement, so we're going to leave that as is. And then the other current assets, let's just grow it in line with revenue growth rate. Because as our revenue grows, we should also be receiving more cash and also higher account receivables. Now for prepaid expenses, you have to make an assumption. Generally, your expenses should grow as your operation grows, so you could use revenue growth rate. But we know that expenses are also driven from expenses that you incur, so we can use either growth rate as you see fit for here. To keep it simple, let's just assume all our assets are driven from revenue growth rates. Property, plans, and equipment actually needs to be reduced by the depreciation expense that we incur every year. So minus the balance in 2025. And you'll see that PPE actually goes to zero starting from 2027 because all the equipments have been amortized. Now in real life, this should never happen because you need to purchase new equipment once they get obsolete. But for this case, we'll just leave this as is. Intangible assets have remained consistent every year. So it means that these intangible assets have not been impaired. So we're just going to assume that this will stay consistently 300,000. For other non-current assets, we can see that this is also fixed every year. So we're going to keep it that way because this is driven from non-operational items. Now for accounts payable, let's keep this simple again and grow this by the expense growth rate. Because as we incur more expenses, our liabilities should also increase. Now for deferred revenue, I'm actually going to increase this based on revenue growth rate because deferred revenue should grow based on revenue and then other current liabilities keep it consistent with expense growth rate. And for other non-current liabilities, they have always remained zero. So let's just keep it zero as well. Now, equity mentioned in the case that we're not expecting additional equity injections. So we're just going to increase this by the income that we expect to generate because equity increases based on retained income and retained income increases based on that income. Now, if we quickly set up a check here, Let's just make sure that total assets matches total liabilities and equity. And we can see that there's a difference. So technically, this is what we should expect to go into cash. But we're going to also calculate this using the cash flow statement. So the cash flow statement has three sections. It is operating, financing, and investing. And it is recommended to always start with the operating. So for the operating section, you start with net income. So I'm just going to go back and link to the net income that we forecasted. And we add back depreciation and amortization because these are not cash outflows. So let's link to here. And then from here and changes in working capital are driven from your balance sheet inputs. The simplest way to understand this section is that if assets increase, you reduce cash. And if assets decrease, you increase cash. For example, if you purchased inventory, your inventory asset would go up but that means you spent cash to purchase that inventory. On the other side, the liabilities is the opposite. This means that if your liability goes down, it means your cash goes down. And if your liabilities go up, it means your cash goes up. This is the easiest way to think about it, 
but you'll have a better understanding once you actually work in a corporate environment and get more exposure to financial statements, booking treatments, and etc. But for now, for other non-current assets, let's go back to our balance sheet and we're going to subtract prior year minus current year so that if the current year is higher, it returns a negative. And then accounts receivable, same thing. We're just going to subtract prior year minus current year. Prepaid expenses would be the same. And then other current assets, also the same. Accounts payable, I mentioned it's the opposite. So we're just going to subtract current minus prior. Credit cards, current minus prior. Accrued expenses, deferred revenue, they're all in order. So let's just copy this formula down. And then total change in working capital would be the sum of the values here. And then the total from cash from operating activities is going to be the sum in the change in working capital and then the adjustments to net income. And then for financing activities, we're going to just subtract other non-current liabilities minus the prior year. Now change in equity is a bit interesting. Note that our equity balance increased based on retained earnings change, which is driven from net income, which we already factored in into the operating activities. The case already mentions that we don't expect any equity injections. So realistically, this should always stay zero. But from a calculation perspective, how you get to the zero is that you would subtract current year equity minus prior year equity, but you would also subtract net income because you're already counting it in operating activities. So this will get you to your zero. So in the case that there is actually equity injections, for example, let's say that the owner injected additional 300,000, you will notice in your cash flow statement, there is actually a change in equity. But we know in the case that there is no equity injection, so let's just revert that. Now, capital expenditures is similar to how we calculated equity. So let's actually start with prior year PBE minus current year. And from here, you also have to subtract the depreciation that you added back because this section should calculate how much cash you spent on additional capital expenditures. So you need to eliminate the impact that depreciation has on the change in the PPE balance. So we now have cash from investing activities as well. And then beginning cash balance is just the ending cash balance from prior year. And then your total is your cash from operating, financing, and investing. And then your ending cash balance is your beginning cash plus your net changing cash. And then in our balance sheet, we want to link our cash to the result of the cash flow statement. And then if we check, we actually have some differences. And it's because I made a mistake in calculating the total current liabilities where I copied over the wrong formula. So let's just overwrite that. And we now have this all resolved. And it just goes to show how useful it is to have these checks in place. And with this, we have finished the three statement model. We first forecasted the income statement based on assumptions and then built out the balance sheet using assumptions from the income statement and then built out the cash flow based on the figures from the balance sheet and then finalized the cash and cash equivalents based on the result from the cash flow statement. So all of these statements has a relationship and understanding their drivers is very important. Whenever you have time, I highly recommend for you to try this test yourself. This is a very common form of test that you may receive when applying for a finance role. This test will be available on my website for free under the cases. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly and I will see you guys in the next video.